Welcome back everybody inside the Anatomy Lab. Today we are diving into the fascinating world of breathing, focusing especially on the movements of the diaphragm and its supporting muscles. Let's take a closer look at how the diaphragm actually moves within our body. At first glance the motion of the diaphragm reminds of a jellyfish that is gracefully gliding through water. Just like the pulsations of a jellyfish that propels itself forward, the diaphragm contracts and relaxes rhythmically to facilitate breathing. As you can see when we inhale the diaphragm contracts and flattens, moving downward towards the abdominal cavity. Conversely, when we exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and returns to its dome-like shape. Speaking of the dome, maybe you have realized that the dome of the diaphragm is asymmetrical. This variation in height is caused by the presence of the liver on the right side of the body. The liver occupies a significant portion of the upper right quadrant of the abdominal cavity, pushing up against the diaphragm. Therefore, the right side of the diaphragm is pushed higher than the left. I've read that the diaphragm can rise up to 6.5 cm from its lowest to its highest position, depending on the stress level and of course our very own individual anatomical structures. In this animation, the dome rises about 2 inches or 5 cm. Let's move on to my favorite camera angle. Here you can see the diaphragm unfolding its magic from below. The three openings that you can see allow the aorta, the esophagus and the inferior vena cava to pass through. As a side note, when the diaphragm contracts, it typically thickens from 1 to 2 centimeters or from 0.4 to 0.8 inches. I find this quite remarkable. Let's move on and add the helper muscles for the diaphragm, the intercostal muscles. Without going into too much detail, these muscles have three layers and we will focus on only two. The external intercostal muscles, which are visible on the surface, contract during inhalation, lifting the ribs upwards and outwards. This expansion of the torso aids in drawing the air into the lungs. Beneath them, the internal intercostal muscles contract during forced exhalation, depress the ribs and assist in expelling air from the lungs. To better understand the movement of the intercostal muscles, locate your ribs with your fingers and gently feel the space between them. That's where your intercostal muscles lie. As you breathe in and breathe out, you can feel these muscles expanding and contracting along with the movement of your ribcage. The diaphragm and intercostal muscles work together to adjust breathing in response to oxygen needs. When more oxygen is needed, like during exercise or stress, these muscles increase activity, allowing deeper and faster breaths for better oxygen delivery. Conversely, when oxygen demand is low, such as during rest, they reduce activity to conserve energy while still meeting the body's needs. This dynamic regulation ensures an optimal balance between oxygen supply and demand. After discussing all of this, Let's proceed to our final round where we simply consider all superficial layers. We can then appreciate how this movement originating from the very core of our being influences all structures lying superficially to it. As always, I also encourage you to share your feedback in the comments, especially if you have any suggestions to enhance this animation. I will for sure update this based on your inputs and new findings from my side. Additionally, if any of you have access to surgical images of the diaphragm showing its tendons or fiber orientations, I would greatly appreciate receiving them. I think there is still room for improvement and with accurate visuals I can create a more informative version. I also plan to reach out and collaborate with experts in various fields related to breathing to explore different patterns and movements of the diaphragm. I think this collaboration will provide valuable insights in how the internal movements at our core influences as human beings. As always, I will also release a couple of short versions to this video without any commentary. This will give you another chance to watch the diaphragm in movement without any distraction or additional input. I think that's all I have to say for this time. I thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you soon, back inside the lab.